golf, surfing on the course, eating some incredible gourmet in a spot you probably never heard of. We take you there. Then we fly to one of the busiest airports in the world to try a new restaurant by one of our favorite celeb chefs who knows plain food. And how about another red wine that tastes expensive, but in some places, it's less than $10 a bottle. We get to the root of it all for you. And then we go to Rome to show you why the Eternal City needs to be on your bucket list. Let's go, Jet Setters. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. And welcome. So we have plenty of travel, food, wine, and golf for you all over the world. And we begin in South Carolina in Pauly's Island in Merle's Inlet for an elegant and gourmet golf getaway. We've got a weekend getaway for your golf game and your palate. And this one is in Pauly's Island and Merle's Inlet with a premier lodge unforgettably great food. Two memorable but very different courses along with some surfing. Well first, hit Caledonia Golf and Fish Club. The views are amazing at this former rice plantation. Driving in gives you a southern feel with a touch of Augusta. Like Augusta, the course requires shot making. It's as beautiful as it is tight. If you want to score, be accurate and play to the distances. The greens are quick and tricky. Sure, it's tough, but you'll love the challenge. Now, we played with two new friends from Connecticut, Bill and Michelle, who rate Caledonia at the top of their list. Yes, three times. Yeah, we played it three times. Uh, the course is challenging. It's probably one of the prettiest courses I've ever played in my life. Um, Every hole is a postcard. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. You also get a lasting memory of some Carolina clam chowder when you make the turn and head to the 10th hole. Now the 18th hole is a great finisher. Not long, but you better put your drive in the fairway. That's right, water runs down the right side of the fairway all the way to the front of the green, making a challenging second shot. Late afternoon play gives you an attentive and happy bar crowd on the clubhouse balcony, as Michelle and you found out with good approach shots and the tricky birdie putts. You and I both had approach shots on number 18. What was it like? <laughs> well, at first it's very intimidating, um, but it's good to hear the roar of the crowd. I think I could get used to it. <laughs> yeah, just make believe the water's not there. <laughs> yeah. And the balcony and the bar restaurant are worth it before and after the round. Try the Caledonia Lobster Bisque, loaded with tiny shrimp, wishing you had gotten a bowl, not a cup. And then try Titi's French Dip Roast Beef with grilled onions and oozing brie cheese. Martha's Shrimp Plate is a southern favorite with fresh shrimp that are hand-breaded and not too heavy. Now, next day, we took our game and our palettes to nearby True Blue Golf Course. This is another beautiful, eye-catching track but that's where the similarities to Caledonia end. That's right. True Blue is a grip it and rip it golf course. The fairways are wide open and they are long. You have plenty of room for your drives, but there are some par fives that are 600 yards long. Yeah, and there's also plenty of water and waste areas, but no sand traps. That means you can ground your club in the sand anytime. True Blue greens are massive, so work on your long lag putts too. Take a look at this par three, third hole. That's right, this is one of the many picturesque holes, and this one's not too long, but with a big green. Now you and your wife, Terry, hit the green, but barely missed your birdie putts. The highlight of True Blue was your surfing. That's right, I rode the golf board for 18 holes. Now this is a ton of fun. You definitely play quicker because you can go to parts of the course that golf carts can't. The only places you can't go is on the greens or the tee boxes. Now, is it difficult to maneuver? You know, not really. I mean, I had no wrecks. And here's the other thing. It is a great core and balance workout. I highly recommend it. So after golf, head to True Blue Grill, where you can watch other golfers coming in. Now, the Reuben is a must with corned beef, Swiss cheese on harvest rye bread. Get a salad with mango, pineapple, vinaigrette dressing. The True Blue Wrap is so good, 
It is a Cobb salad in a wrap. And the place to stay is the Inlet Sports Lodge in Merle's Inlet. You get a hotel room that resembles a boutique efficiency apartment. That's right. It also has a widow's walk so you can head to the roof to see sunrise and sunsets. But the Inlet Sports Lodge also has Costa. This is a hidden farm-to-table gem. That's right. Take your time and indulge here. We started with these incredible stuffed mushrooms. Stuffed with crab, a white wine sauce, and fresh lemon juice. One of the best appetizers we have ever had. We tried two of their signature drinks. The Dark and Stormy is a mule with dark rum. And the new Old Fashioned is perfect with ginger, bourbon, sweet vermouth, bitters orange, and muddled cherry finished with soda. Now brace yourself for these entrees. The first is scallops with balsamic reduction. Tender and juicy, these might be the best scallops ever. And we paired it perfectly with the Rambauer Chardonnay, only adding to the perfection. The next OMG is the Filet Oscar, a tender filet topped with jumbo lump crab meat and hollandaise sauce cooked medium rare to perfection. Now we paired it with the Dreaming Tree Crush, a red blend of Merlot, Zinfandel, Syrah, and Petite Syrah. Surprisingly creamy with berry flavors and perfect. The next night we found another palate adventure, the Chive Blossom Cafe in Polly's Island. Now this is another farm to table restaurant that stays true even in its specialty cocktails. We sipped the Winter Peach, which has the 1233 Carolina Peach Vodka, distilled in nearby Myrtle Beach that we have showed you here before on the show. And this was superb. It had fresh lemon and lime juice, preserved ginger, club soda, and a Grand Marnier float. Now we also tried the Singapore Sling, which had gin, cherry brandy, fresh lemon and lime juice, house-made grenadine, pineapple juice, bitters, and club soda. For appetizers, we had the shrimp stuffed medjool dates. These had apple smoked bacon, toasted pecans, smoked gouda, and a balsamic drizzle. A combo that will be a first for your taste buds. Now next we had crab slaw. It looks like a salad, but it has avocado, artichokes, jumbo lump crab, spinach chiffonade, tomatoes, capers, olive oil, and fresh herbs. Wow. That is some salad. Now for dinner, we tried the Southern Bouillabaisse. This was superb with flounder, clams, shrimp, scallops, corn, butter beans, tomatoes, and okra, all in a white wine saffron broth. And the jumbo lump crab cakes are loaded with crab while sitting atop lobster and corn mashed potatoes grilled asparagus, and dill cream. The grilled tuna was seared to perfection with wasabi slaw, crispy noodles, and a mustard soy vinaigrette. In the mood for a little Asian, try these Asian noodles with chicken, spicy peanut sauce, and veggies, both light and tasty. Now, you can definitely get your fill of great food. Along with great golf in Polly's Island and Merle's Inlet, South Carolina, just south of Myrtle Beach. Now, this is also becoming a very popular area for people to move to, either to retire or to work near the beach. And it is also far enough south that you'll probably never get winter snow. So, when we come back, who chooses an airport based on a restaurant? We did, and we'll take you there across the pond. Undercover Jet Setter is booming. We are looking for partners to attract consumers interested in travel, food, mixology, wine, restaurants, and golf. Your business and expertise will be profiled on our shows and online segments that will provide you with valuable marketing tools which you can use on your sites. And your business will also gain exposure to our Undercover Jet Setter global reach of over 120 million across all of our platforms. Drop us a line here and let's partner up together. Welcome back. We are big fans of Gordon Ramsay, as you know, and he is always breaking new culinary ground. And he did it again at one of the world's busiest airports. At some point, jet setters will land or connect at London's Heathrow Airport. And you won't want some old plain food. Of course not. You're a jet setter. And what you will want is plain food. A brilliant concept by one of our favorite chefs, Gordon Ramsay, at Heathrow Airport. And this is far from ordinary or plain. And 
better than first class food. That is right. On a recent layover, we hung out here and actually skipped the first class lounge. And for some good reasons. It is comfy and inviting, plus the views are spectacular on this fifth floor perch. And Gordon's staff, as usual, outshine themselves with knowledge, warmth, and charm, just like you're a guest visiting their home. Oh yeah, and uh, the food and the drink too. We dove into this British short rib beef burger with Monterey Jack cheese and chimichurri mayo. Nothing plain about it. That's right. The beef wasn't just a burger patty, but an elegant meatloaf cooked with some onions and other spices. We added a Caesar salad. This was outstanding, tasty, light, and refreshing. The anchovies were superb, marinated in lemon and olive oil. Yeah, even if you're not an anchovy fan, this is worth trying. Besides the food, Gordon serves up some inventive drinks, as usual. And, you know, we ate light on this pass-through and opted for some specialty cocktails with Gordon's creative touch. The Bloody Mary had Finlandia vodka with very fresh tomato juice and a classic spice mix that seems to have Worcestershire and a touch of horseradish. Next, we had the Hemingway Flies Again, and we think Papa Hemingway would be taking off with this. It is beautiful, and it has Bacardi Carta Blanca rum, Cherry Marnier, pink grapefruit, citrus, and egg white. It's light and refreshing with a kick, and you could drink these all day. Now this may be the hit for bourbon drinkers. It's called Make Bourbon Great Again. It had blackberry-infused Woodford Reserve mixed with barrel-aged bitters and lemon. Now, if you love bourbon, this is worth it. Get it just for the name alone. The bitters and citrus cut through the richness of the bourbon and complement the blackberry infusion perfectly. Next, the High Fly Mai Tai. It has Bacardi Carta Oro Rum, Grand Marnier, pineapple, lime, and orgeat syrup, which is made from almonds. And here's the kicker. Egg whites. Who would think to put egg whites in a Mai Tai? And it works. It took the tropical and fruity and made it delicate. Perfect for a pre-flight cocktail. Plain Food also has an extensive wine list, including some very nice bubbles selections. Now, this is Gordon Ramsay's only airport restaurant, and Gordon... Just a suggestion from your friends. You need to create more at airports everywhere around the world. Now, if you want to hit plain food, it is in Heathrow Airport at Terminal 5. And we'd also suggest checking your arrival and departure gates and what terminal you're going to be in ahead of time to see if you have time in between flights. That's right. So next we will dive into a red wine that tastes very expensive. But it is insanely cheap. You can find Undercover Jet Setter on Wingding TV, a streaming channel, and so much more. Like us, you can have your own show or channel to promote your business and reach more customers. Because Wingding Media is also a social media and digital marketing giant. Look what they've done for the Ultimate Long Drive Championships. More than a million viewers with 30 licensed partnerships sold around the world. So check out wingding.tv to watch Undercover Jet Setter or to create something for your own business. We are in Cozumel, Mexico. You may have noticed, but the majority of Undercover Jet Setter is shot on the iPhone. So that means you can create your own TV show. You may want to have great vacation videos. Well, we've made it easier for you with our book. It's called The TV Studio In Your Hand. It's a quick read, and you can get it here. So bring us along for your next vacation video or your new TV show. I still haven't had it. You still haven't had it. I still haven't had it. Get her reaction of this great. I've smelt it. I will admit to that. Full disclosure. I have smelt it, but I haven't actually had it. So before we talk about it, let's let you enjoy it and then give me your thoughts. Okay. Oh, very tasty. And you know what? It smells different than how it tastes. Mm -hmm. And so the interesting thing is the bouquet. I get a lot of the Syrah, and we'll talk about that in a second in the other blend that's in there, but I get a lot of Syrah on that. When you taste it, it's very jammy. It's got to be the combo of two things, I think, Mm -hmm. that's making it that way. And then the Syrah is nice because it kind of cuts through with Mm -hmm. a little pepperiness. 
tones it down, but those other two things together are very jammy. Nice. Interesting. Nice. One of them is jammy, but it's Absolutely. interesting. So okay, so this is a this is a 2015 Primal Roots, and uh, the great thing about this is that I've gotten this for seven dollars a bottle. I mean, wow. usually it's around ten dollars a bottle. This does not taste like a seven or ten dollar. Model. No, okay. not at all. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, you would not ever peg it. I mean, I mean, I would say, you know, $19 probably, mm -hmm. maybe more, yeah. depending on where you're at. If you ordered in a restaurant, if you ordered this in a restaurant and you had this as their house wine, you would be blown away yeah. by how good it is. So now we've, we've, we've got goat cheese and we've got salmon, so we're going to pair it with them just for you. But I'm going to tell you this right now. This is based off my palate. I have not had anything bad with this. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's just because of the combination. And again, the combination, from what we can tell, based on what the tasting notes are, it's a little different from what's on the bottle. Yes. So it's 49% uh, Merlot, 42% uh, Syrah, and then it says it's 7% Zinfandel. Now does that add up to 100? It does. Well, pretty okay. close. Did you have calculate or it? Or maybe it's 9%. So, so that 9% oh. rather than 7 so that would have been. But on the bottle, it says Petite Syrah. And what's really fascinating mm -hmm. is that, I don't know what the percentage is of this, you smelled that. You well, that yeah, too. I could tell Petite Syrah, and, and I said, well, it doesn't have Petite Syrah in it, so I don't know why I'm smelling it, but it's gotta be the Syrah, because um, there's a definite different fragrance that you get mm -hmm. from this. And then when you taste it, it's got this super jamminess, even though it's only 10% Zin, honestly, I think it's because it's got the Merlot, which Merlot is such a great blending wine. Yeah. That's why they use it in Bordeaux all the time because it kind of cuts through things and it kind of morphs almost into the other flavors. So I think the Merlot combined with the Zin is what's making that super jammy, but then you can smell the Syrah for sure. And I got to admit, when, when I first told you about this, I said, oh, this is a Zinfandel blend. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, I was kind of shocked once I began looking at it going like, it's only seven to 9% or 10%. Of Zinfandel, yet that Zin is pretty strong, and I think what you're saying is right. There, well, yeah, it. and it's almost like some, it, depending on how you're smelling it. Like if you swirl it, you get more of the Syrah. If you just pick it up, I do get the Zin. Yeah, it's it's interesting, mm -hmm. and you know us, we've got to go avant garde with this pairing thing. So we oh, yeah. we paired it with some salmon because we love to pair red wine with salmon, and we've never tried it with salmon before, right? So let's try it with the salmon. Mm -hmm. I'm so strong, excited. For sure, yeah because I think it'll be really good. And when we do salmon, we like to put lemon and capers on it. Of course, eggs are always good too. Mm -hmm. I think capers are a must. Lemon's a must. They're just briny capers. Mm -hmm. Goes well with everything. Mm. Oh no, that's interesting. Now see, that definitely brings out much more of the zin and the caramel and the the fruity and the jammy and the the merlot even the little chocolatey there because of the brininess and the and the salmon well it's good yeah, i like it with that that's, that's really, good, really good and again you're going to get this for about ten dollars a bottle um it doesn't have those heavy heavy tannins um it's smooth mm -hmm. um very smooth velvety very velvety yeah along with that jamminess yet at the same time too you get um you know, you get the Syrah taste. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, no, it's a nice blend, a yeah. very nice blend that these people did. And I could see this with a roast chicken mm -hmm. dinner, of course, yeah. that'd be delicious. Um, I've I had this think, with steak though. I've yeah, had it with well, steak. I was going to say, definitely Excellent. steak, yeah. even a roast pork loin, mm -hmm. that would be fabulous. Mm -hmm. But I could also see it going with like some like chicken satay or, mm -hmm. you know, some skewers on the grill, like with that smoky grill flavor, I think would pair really well with it. I think that'd be nice too. I think also if you're a white wine drinker and you want to test reds, and you're, you're a little leery of it, this is a great first choice. Definitely. It's a blend, so you get a lot of good things in there, so it's not just the, you know, it's not so, that cab that, that could be gritty and dirty for you, mm -hmm. it, it, or that pinot that just seems a little light and you don't get it, you, mm -hmm. you don't get a lot for it. This, you just get so much of it, so. But I just had it with the goat cheese. Excellent. That's what? so good. And you put the chives on top of it. The goat so, cheese, yeah. well, I think goat cheese, if you just have plain goat cheese and just sip some chives, some fresh over it, it's it's a nice fresh addition of herbs, especially if you don't have a lot of time. And it looks so great on its own. I mean, it's like white and green, you can't go wrong with that. And I love how the goat cheese pairs with that. 
the the goat cheese really springs to life. Like you get that whole tanginess of the goat cheese that you really love that you get goat cheese for. That's delicious with this. It really it's does. almost like you're having like a high-end peanut butter and jelly sandwich with the goat cheese and this oh. wine. That's like a high-end peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And I'm not a peanut butter and jelly sandwich fan, but this kind of peanut butter and jelly I could get used to. Dessert to me is cheese. And so this with the goat cheese and that for dessert, I mean, what a phenomenal dessert. That would totally surprise your guests. And especially if you've got people that are on, you know, maybe a gluten-free diet, an Atkins diet, or the new keto diet, perfect dessert for them. Wine and some goat cheese, you can't, you can't go wrong with that. I mean, that's the perfect one. I love it. It's actually better than I thought it was gonna be. Because I didn't want to have my expectations too high, because you know how that goes, and then it's like, oh, not good. But this is actually better than I thought it was going to be. I, I really enjoy it. I can see how you say it goes with everything. So it's a good blend. It's it's one of those that you can serve it, and people are going to be blown away. They they're not going to know that you only spent seven dollars, eight dollars, nine dollars, possibly, you know, for it. it. Pairs well with everything. I love it. Cool. Cheers. Primal roots. Put the S on the end. It's primal roots. And next, we will explore why Rome should be on your bucket list. For a refreshing and extremely healthy drink to go with everything, try this one. It is called A1C, and it's conceivably the healthiest drink ever made. A1C is the first scientifically designed diabetic drink in the history of the world and we love it. And it's just not for people with diabetes, although it is great for that. Anyone can enjoy the wonderful health benefits and delicious flavor. Go to a1cdrinks.com to try it and use coupon code JETSETTER1 for a 5% discount. Cheers, Jet Setters. This is your big game appetizer. They are the Super Bowl stuffed mushrooms with an undercover jet setter hack discovered by your wife, Terry. That's right. Now you'll be cheering these as much as your favorite team in the Super Bowl. And they are easy to make with ingredients you can get at any grocery store. So first, start with three pounds of fresh mushrooms. Now, here we picked up various types of mushrooms. In all, we had about 100 mushrooms to be cooked on two cookie sheets. Clean the mushrooms, then remove the stems. Hold on to the stems, though. They are part of the undercover jet setter hack. Let the mushroom caps dry out as you slice up the stems into smaller chunks. Set them aside in a bowl. Next, you need a pound of sausage. We got the Jimmy Dean Premium Pork Sausage, a staple for many people. Place the sausage in a frying pan with the stove temperature at medium high. Now notice you don't need any olive oil or butter here. The cooked sausage will provide enough. Now add the chopped up stems to the sausage and then add about a half to one teaspoon of granulated roasted garlic or garlic powder according to your taste. Now add three tablespoons of sour cream. We chose the local Walmart brand. Stir it all up and let it cook. The cooking time will vary and you will want the sour cream to create a little bit of a gravy for the sausage and the chopped stems. Turn the stove off and let the pan sit for about 10 minutes. You will want the gravy to soak into the mix of the sausage and the mushroom stems so it looks like this. Line a cookie sheet with silver foil, which will help in determining when the mushrooms are done, as well as making cleanup much easier. Line up the mushroom caps on the foil, separating them by similar sizes for consistent cooking with bigger ones on one sheet, smaller on the other. Then take your one pound of sliced Swiss cheese and slice those into squares that will be placed on top. Now with a spoon, take the mix of sausage and sliced mushroom stems and drop them in the mushroom caps. Then use the sliced Swiss cheese to cover them. Turn the oven on to broil and place the cookie sheet into the oven. Let them broil for five to 10 minutes. Again, cooking time will vary based on your oven and also the size of the mushrooms. And here's how you know if they're done. The cheese will be melted down over the stuffing and you will see drippings on the silver foil, which means the mushrooms have cooked. Now put them on a dish and line them up to let the cheers begin. 
The taste is rich and savory. The sausage adds a meaty, slightly spicy kick, while the sour cream provides a creamy tanginess. The chopped mushroom stems add earthy undertones, complementing the savory ingredients. And the melted Swiss cheese on top adds a nutty, gooey finish. You will have these at all of your Super Bowls or any gatherings at home. Enjoy. Enjoy. classic Rome, and there's modern Rome, and there's something in between, and there's actually no other city like it, right? It really is. It's, it's almost like it's a bucket list city. If oh, you've never been sure. there, you have to go there. And a lot of people think, oh, I'm Catholic, I need to go there. No, you need to go there if you're anybody who lives in the world, because Western civilization started there. And it's it's such, it's a fun city. Yes. Uh, it's easy to get around, and we're going to talk about that as well. Wouldn't right. you say that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Friendly, we're going to talk about that too. But here's what I have to say overall. My impression, 30,000-foot view. You are in Rome. Okay, here you are. You're walking next to ruins from B.C. era. There's all these ruins. Ancient buildings. And then you're walking next to things that are modern-day same century, here we are actually in 2019, about to be 2020, and that is what you're, you're doing. I mean, it's like food, wine, people, architecture blended together from ancient to modern. It's amazing, it's actually amazing. And you touch the modern part because when you look at the cuisine that is there, and we're gonna get into the cuisine as well, and we have it here, we've got the pasta, we've got the the tomatoes, we have the cheese. Aroma we tomatoes. Have, we have the wine. And <laughs> Catch the, <it> Pepe. <laughs> the Mediterranean diet, as we talk about, is one of the healthiest diets you could ever have. And when you're there, that's all you do is the Mediterranean diet. And it is fabulous. It's it's one of the best cities. Now you you've been there before, because you were there on your honeymoon. I was actually there as a college student. And I can't say a ton has changed, but it's still into the modern era. Absolutely. Now we will have a lot more on Rome coming up in the future shows. The food, the wine, and fun are endless there. So keep it tuned to this channel as we will have more Undercover Jet Setter coming your way. <laughs> Thanks for joining us and cheers. Cheers. Undercover Jet Setter helps you jet set the world and at home, bringing you travel, food, wine, mixology, and golf with a reach of 120 million on social media and streaming networks worldwide. We're on Facebook, X, and Instagram. Check us out on YouTube, Wingding TV, Canyon Star TV, and DB TV. If you have any questions, comments, or requests, drop them in the comments below.